Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi wa tabi'ina lahum bi ihsan ila yawm ad-din wa alayna ma'ahum wa fihim bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin. To proceed alhamdulillah we ask Allah as our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would do in these early nights of Rajab when seeing the Hilal of Rajab. Allahumma barak lana fi Rajab wa Sha'ban wa balligna Ramadan. We ask you, O Allah, to bless us or bless for us Rajab and Sha'ban and grant us to attain or reach Ramadan. And we ask you that by your mercy and you're the most merciful of the merciful. And alhamdulillah, we have great hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I urge myself and my brothers and sisters to call to heart Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's gaze and to be present with one subhanahu wa ta'ala who sent his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to inform us that on the likes of this night, the first eve of Rajab after Maghrib, on the last day of Jumada Athani, and before the first day of Rajab, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not reject prayers. And he sent his beloved sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam to inform us that the celestial call, right, the celestial, the heavenly, the divine proclamation actually, the divine proclamation that occurs in the last third of the night, through most of the nights of the year, Allah offers himself or offers his grace to any servant that will expose him or herself to the grace of Allah. Who has a need that I may fulfill? Who is supplicating, making dua that I may answer? Who is seeking forgiveness that I may forgive them? Who is repenting that may I may accept it? That happens as is in sound hadith in the last third of the night through the majority of the nights of the year. However, in certain special nights, such as the eve before Jumu'ah, meaning Thursday night uh, before Friday, that happens from Maghrib. So call to heart a generous, forgiving, accepting of the repentance, answering of the prayers of his servants, Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused us to be attached to his grace and he brought us together to remember him subhanahu wa ta'ala and to pray to him subhanahu wa ta'ala and invoke prayers also on a blessed night for invoking prayers upon his beloved sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam who said اَكْثِرُوا مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ عَلَيْهِ فِي لَيْلَةِ الزَّهْرَى وَالْيَوْمِ الْأَزْهَرِ Make many prayers upon me in the radiant night and the bright, bright day for inna salatakum tu'radu alay. For surely your prayers are shown to me. Right? So these prayers that we send, particularly on the eve before Friday, Thursday night after Maghrib, up till dawn, and the day of Friday, from Fajr on on Friday, as long as you're sending salawat on the Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, you're being shown to the Prophet Muhammad. So alhamdulillah for this grace. And he sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam, he taught us how to relate to our Lord, to transact with our Lord through our days and nights and weeks and months and years. Right? And we have a limited number of these. I and you have X number of breaths, X number of hours, X number of days, weeks and months and years. And when those have expired, we've expired. Right? And um, the blessing lies in taking advantage of our lifespan. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, taught us how to do this in general and specific. Right? In general, his state was, as Citizen Aisha described, Kana yadkur Allah fi kulli ahyanihi. He would remember Allah in all of his times. However, there were specific times and places and manners that he taught us uh, to seek Allah's grace, right? In these, um, in these 
seasons of grace or those times of grace or those places of grace. Surely your Lord has nefahat, right? In the days of your lives. He taught us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? And nefahat, um, from the meanings of them, uh, are gifts, right? Allah has gifts in the days of your lives that he gives. Would you not present yourself to these? To receive these from the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So the last third of the night is a time of nafahat. Laylatul Jumu'ah, the night before uh, Friday, is a time of nafahat. Right? The first eve of Rajab, and this is the first eve of Rajab. That is a time of nafahat. Right? From the things narrated concerning the first eve of Rajab, is that prayer is not rejected. Right? And um, Al Bayhaqi narrates this from Abdullah bin Omar and Al Shafi'i. In some of its reports, it's raised to the Prophet Sallallahu that in five nights prayer is not rejected. One uh, Thursday night or the eve of Jumu'ah. The night before Eid Fitr. The night before Eid Adha. The first eve of Rajab. And the eve, the night before the 15th day of Sha'aban. Those are days that prayers are not rejected. Sayyidina Ali, and who is Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu? Sayyidina Ali is Babu Madina til ilm. Right? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, I am the city of knowledge. And Ali is its gate. Right? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam testified to the knowledge of Sayyidina Ali. Right? Reared. Uh, from the Ahlul Bayt of the Prophet ﷺ, from Akhas Ahlul Bayt, right? From Ahlul Kisa, reared by the Prophet ﷺ from the earliest Muslims. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa radiyallahu an Sayyidina Ali. Sayyidina Ali would give life to four nights. And inshallah ta'ala, and this is the first of these four, uh, perhaps, that we're, um, Allah has blessed us to have a home to house these majalis in, but may Allah make this our continuous practice as has been the practice since the time of the Salaf in many of the Muslim lands, right? In the East and the West, right? As far West as, as, as West Africa and North Africa, and as far East, uh, as south, far Southeast Asia and perhaps China. You have Muslims that are attached to giving life to the likes of these nights, right? These practices, this tarbiyah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam founded in his community that uh, continues to be passed and will continue to be passed until the final hour, or close to the final hour, as the Prophet ﷺ has taught us, right? لا يزال طائفة من أمتي ظاهرين على الحق. There will continue to be a group of my community aware of or giving victory to the truth. لا يضرهم من نواهم. Not harmed by those who oppose them. حتى يأتي أمر الله. Right, until the command of Allah comes, right? Until the affair is close to the final hour, and the final hour will come on disbelievers. But until that time, till that wind that kills off the last believers, there will be people on the truth, right? Um, establishing these sunnah. So from these uh, practices of uh, Ahlul Kisa, of the likes of the, the gate of the city, citadel of knowledge, was to give life to the first eve of Rajab, the night before the 15th of Sha'ban, the night before Laylat uh, Eid Fitr and Adha, right? Before the two Eids. And um, we were uh, pleased to learn, we have our brother Anas uh, Pasha, right? Who comes from Egypt, from Upper Egypt, I believe. And he asked me yesterday, and I hadn't announced it, um, where we're going to spend the night, where we're going to do Atikaf. And I haven't visited significantly Egypt. I've passed through briefly once, uh, visited Sayyidina Hussein and uh, Sayyidina Fisa and uh, Shafi'i. Um, but I haven't spent much time there, certainly not Rajab. But I was pleased to learn that the practice that we saw um, in, in Ahmad Masajid, right, the majority of the masjids of Tadim uh, that also, and we've heard of, for example, in Masajid in places like Istanbul, and we hear of it in places like Egypt, and that's because of the, uh, the blessing of uh, the community of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And we hope that we could found these practices, and we're very happy to see the kids as well. Men, ladies, uh, elder people, kids, alhamdulillah, when we'd be in Tareem on this night, um, people would, you know, 
do their work during the day, whatever that was. Maybe they were a merchant, maybe they were a driver, maybe they were a, a laborer, maybe they were a farmer. And then um, rest a little bit after Isha. And then at about midnight, they called an additional Adhan of Isha. And then people would awaken and go to the masjid uh, and begin pray an additional Isha. And, and, and they tend to follow the Shafi'i school there. So repeating any congregational prayer is recommended. Uh, so they would do an additional Isha. For, for some people, that might have been their first Isha. They got a little bit of rest. Um, they would pray Isha. And then through the night in the masjid, there would be Quran circles. Right? And then, um, and then when we would do it at Dar Mustafa, from time to time, someone would break off from their circle and just pray independent tahajjud. Then at the end of the night, they would do a khatam of Quran um, and, and complete the night with the adhkar that hopefully we'll complete the night with. So may Allah bless us to establish this. And there'd be kids, right? And they would have the loudspeaker on in the minaret so people in the neighborhood are hearing them. If it was some, one of the other nights, like the night before Eid, periodically they'd do takbirs through the night. Right, but giving life to these nights is a blessed practice. They would serve like some popcorn or some little sweets or something, uh, coffee, something to you know, kind of placate the nafus a little bit, appease the nafus a little bit through this mujahada, and also you know attract the kids and the, and the and the common people that might go for something like that. And alhamdulillah, and that's um that's the wisdom of the learned of the community of the Nabi Muhammad. And may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala grant us to establish these practices. So giving life to these nights. Again, that is a recommendation. That is a blessed practice. How do you give life to a night? At minimum, Isha and Fajr in congregation. Those of you that go home uh, and you're not coming back here or coming, uh, going to one of your home masajid, make sure your Fajr prayer is in congregation. Right? Pray Fajr, Fajr prayer in congregation with the members of your home. Right? So Isha and Fajr in congregation, that's a minimum of giving life. And we want to establish this as a practice, right? as part of our curriculum. There's elements of any sound curriculum in Islamic disciplines, elements that acquire, that, that entail acquisition of knowledge and elements that entail application of learning, right? And mujahada of the nafus. So we want to implement some of these elements, right? Of some mujahada, right? One of them being that we give life to blessed nights, right? Again, at minimum, Isha and Fajr in congregation. You do that. You have the reward the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned in the Sahih uh, Hadith of Imam Muslim. Man sallal isha fi jama'ah fakannama qama nisf al-layl. If someone prays isha in congregation, it is as though he has stood half of the night. Woman salla subha fi jama'ah fakannama salla layla kulla. And if someone also, that's how you would translate that. The, the Hadith implies that the Fajr followed an Isha in congregation. Someone who also prays the dawn prayer in congregation, it is as though he has prayed the whole night long. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Right? So he taught us, he taught us how if you if we follow cautiously and carefully and Nabi Muhammad, we can be people that it's as though they stood through every night of their life in salah, right? Or every night that they were allowed to pray. And alhamdulillah wa shukr ala dhalik. So that's a minimum meaning of giving life to a night. A level above that is most of the night. And uh, the highest, if we're saying it's a night that you do ihya of, right? And the Prophet ﷺ would do that at times. Ahya layla. Sayyidina Aisha said about, um, about the uh, la ilaha illallah, the, the last 10 of Ramadan, right? So the highest meaning of ihya, of giving life to a night, is to spend the whole night in worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And the likes of these nights, they would do so with recitation of Quran, or our shayukh instructed us, recitation of Quran, supplication, some of it gathering as, as we've done, um, and, and then also independent tahajjud through the night, right? And then coming together for a, a dhikr and, and, and supplication at the end of the night. And um, in general, our supplications at the end of the night should entail a lot of istighfar, because Allah praised those who do istighfar, who seek forgiveness at the time called Ashar, right? At the end of the night, right? So um, that's giving life to a night. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And then, so we want to do that uh, tonight, inshallah ta'ala. And may Allah aid us in that. And from our prayers should be prayers for our beloved brothers and sisters like those present and for the community of Nabi Muhammad. 
in the context of Layla Til Qadr, Imam al we said, this is, um, this is the hallmark of the pious, that they pray for the interest, the masalih of the Muslimin. So we're very, we're saddened, saddened and concerned by the, the circumstances of the Muslim community. Right? Now's the time to take it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is again the, the hallmark, that's an emblem, the sign of the pious. The foremost of them being a Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who spent every night praying for us. I was um, making tawaf, it was on hajj, and I could hear someone from behind me. And, and their prayers were just for the ummah. So I said to myself, that's one of the ulama, right? And I turned around. And I didn't know him, but he appeared to be one of the ulama from the subcontinent, right? Because that is a sign of the pious. In addition to obviously begging Allah for their own forgiveness, for their own um, repentance, for their own mercy, for their hereafter, for their this worldly and other worldly needs, they beg Allah. And much of their prayers are dedicated to the community of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So on the likes of this night, let us pray for them. Ya arhamar rahimin, ya arhamar rahimin, faraj anna wa anjimi al-muslimin. And then um, other nights we want to give life to in this upcoming period. Mark your calendars though you can't mark it too precisely. Um, for after Maghrib, on the, before and after Maghrib on the 14th of Shaban. Right? Shaban is coming up. And the eve of the 15th of Shaban is one of the blessed nights of the year the Prophet would give life to. Right? He took permission from Sayyidatina Aisha to stand from her side, right? He laid, uh, it was the night that he spent with Aisha and he laid um, down and then he took permission to stand and spent the whole night um, praying and prostrating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praying on our behalf, right? The eve before the 15th of Shaban. A night the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said uh, that Allah looks to all of the creation and forgives all of them except the polytheist and someone who's harboring enmity. So may Allah protect us from those qualities. I want to give life to that. And then another blessed night that's coming in this phase or this season is the first eve of Ramadan. That's a blessed night. Meaning after Maghrib on the first night, the first night you'll begin Tarawih, right? That is a night that Allah looks to the whole Ummah, right? Allah looks to the Ummah on the first evening of Ramadan. And we want to prepare for that. This is a season to prepare for Ramadan. Right? Plant your seeds, as the learned say. Plant seeds in Rajab. Water them in Shaban and harvest in Ramadan. Much of the preparation in this time should be preparing our hearts for the gaze of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the first of Ramadan. The gaze of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the eve of the 15th of Shaban. Right? We don't want to be caught, if we could say, slip in on that night. That's a big loss when Allah forgives everyone except you, right? Because you have someone that you can't give up enmity towards, or you have a substance that you're, you're uh, perpetuating, a substance abuse issue, right? One of those that's not forgiven on that night is someone who uh, is mudmin al-khamar, right? Someone who is addicted or perpetually consumes alcohol, and the word the Prophet ﷺ used is khamar, and that implies anything that renders you intoxicated, right? So that would be what... Uh, what do they call it? Lean and lean and mean and, and everything between those two, right? Any of that stuff. Give it up. It's a time you're slipping. If 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 Layla till uh, Nisf Shaban comes, the first night of Ramadan comes, and we're like that, mistreating parents. Also, that person is excluded from that forgiveness and other categories of people. Allah protect us from that. So in this phase, we want to pre prepare our hearts for the divine gaze. Right? Worship is bodily, but worship is largely an act of the heart. The underlining meaning and the soul of these works that we performed is presence with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So we want to work on our present. We want to presence, right? Knowing that Allah sees us, watches our hearts, is, is observing what we're saying and doing. Right? So we want to work on our presence so that we fast a fast of presence. A fast of avoiding um, that which displeases the one for whom we're fasting. Right? And it can't just be Maghrib on Ramadan on your marks, get set, go. The first of Ramadan. And suddenly we're able to, you know, perpetuate obedience 
and we disobeyed him all the way up until that time. It's not how it works, right? You're just filling your nafs with things that are going to come out in Ramadan. That's one of the meanings of wasawis in Ramadan. You fill you, If we fill our nafs the whole year with wasawis, don't expect them not to come out in Ramadan in darkness and corrosion on the hearts and, and, and the weight of sin. Don't expect to be light in, in obedience in a month if we've spent 11 months disobeying Allah. So they encourage us, the learned encourage us to begin preparing from this time. Uh, and and uh, the preparation in Rajab is largely um, istighfar, right? Seeking forgiveness is an appropriate dhikr in Rajab. So let us increase our, our, our istighfar, right? Let us increase our istighfar in Sha'ban. An appropriate dhikr to increase is salawat on the Prophet And the command for salawat, that was revealed in Sha'ban. Right? 3356. Surely the angels and Allah and the angels invoke prayers or send prayers upon the Prophet. That was revealed in Sha'ban. Right? It's an, so salawat is an appropriate dhikr in that month. It's also a blessed month to take advantage of. The Prophet ﷺ said, it's a month between Rajab and Ramadan that many people overlook, or uh, of which many people are heedless. Continuing our Iqbal. And then obviously the dhikr of Ramadan is Qur'an, right? The month in which it was revealed. That's in Tarawih, that's also outside of. And, and we should aim to do a completion, and may Allah bless that. So may Allah grant us to take advantage of this night. May Allah grant us to take advantage of this night. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he not deprive us of the rain that comes from the clouds of tawfiq that he gives to our loved ones. From the ulama amilin, um, those learned who act upon the not their knowledge, al-awliya and as-salihin, and um, the pious and, uh, and, and the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah causes clouds of grace to rise from their gatherings and, and rain on hearts and lands and other places, and we ask Allah not to deprive us of one drop of the Sahai of Tawfiq, of the clouds of Tawfiq that He gives in the likes of this first eve of Rajab and its following day, and then the likes of the first ten of Rajab and Laylat and Nisman Shaban, the eve of the 15th of Shaban and the first eve of Ramadan in that season. And we ask Allah to bless us. Allahumma barak lana fi Rajab wa Shaban wa baligna Ramadan. And we ask you, O oh Allah, to bless us in Rajab. Bless us in Shabbat. Grant us to reach Ramadan. We ask you, O Allah, to fulfill all of our needs and accept all of our prayers and forgive all of our sins and turn our evil deeds into good deeds. As the Prophet ﷺ said, those who come together to remember Allah solely for his countenance, a, an angel says, a caller says, and kumu magfuran lakum kad buddi let sayyatukum hasanat. An angel says to them, those who remember Allah sincerely, stand forgiven. Your evil deeds have been turned into good deeds. We ask you that, O oh Allah, by your mercy, and you are the most merciful of the merciful, and by the prestige and the right of your Prophet, who informed us of this, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And we ask you, O oh Allah, to please the Nabi Muhammad with what you show him of these prayers that we send upon him in this gathering and otherwise. And we ask you that these be made for him, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and a relationship and a connection between us and him in khair and lutf and afiyah. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sallam. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.